Have you ever found yourself trapped in the vicious cycle of emotional attachment, a battle that seems endless and leaves you powerless? The good news is, change is possible and it's closer than you might think. Inspired by the wisdom of the Stoic philosophers Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, we're going to uncover the art of detachment and free ourselves from the emotional shackles that bind us. In this video, we'll delve into Stoicism, offering you practical strategies to overcome the attachments clouding your mind. Get ready for a transformative journey towards emotional freedom, gaining clarity and focusing on what truly matters. If personal growth and emotional freedom sound like valuable goals to you, you're in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any content. And stay until the end of the video for exclusive tips we only share with our dedicated community. Let's embark on this journey of discovery and liberation together. The Power of Detachment Let's dive into the depths of detachment, a concept that at first glance might seem like a renunciation, but is, at its core, a journey towards inner freedom. Detachment, as conceived by the Stoics, is not an act of indifference or disinterest in worldly things, but rather a refined art of assigning proper importance to life's variables that are beyond our control. Imagine, if you will, holding the strings of several kites on a windy day. Each one dances to the whim of the breezes, pulling and tensioning as the air currents dictate. Each string in this imaginary scenario symbolizes an emotional attachment, a link to something external that, if not managed carefully, can lead to burnout or the feeling of being dragged by circumstances, losing control of one's trajectory. Detachment, therefore, advises deliberately loosening these ties, not to lose what we love or value but to recognize and accept the impermanent and often uncontrollable nature of these elements. It's about a readjustment of perspective, a redirection of our focus and energy towards what truly is within our reach, our reactions, our emotions, our decisions. This realignment is not a passive process. It requires a conscious and continuous effort to identify where our attachment becomes over-attachment a point where concern for the external begins to dominate us, to define us. But how does one start this journey of detachment? The first step is introspection, a deep dive into our own minds to identify the source of this over-attachment. It can be a relationship, a material object, a career, or even an idea. The crucial question to ask is, why does this dominate me? Seeking the answer leads us to the root cause, often intertwined with fears, insecurities, or the incessant search for external approval and validation. It's a process that demands courage, as facing these inner truths can be uncomfortable. But it's in this discomfort that growth occurs. Beyond introspection, Detachment is cultivated through engaging in activities that bring us intrinsic satisfaction and joy, that fill us without depending on external recognition or reward. Whether it's practicing a hobby, dedicating time to personal projects, or simply being in nature, these activities reinforce our ability to find contentment and value in what is genuinely ours, in what we can control. They teach us to live in the present, to appreciate the moment without the weight of attachments that pull us into the past or cast us into anxieties about the future. Understanding attachment. At the heart of the human condition lies an intriguing paradox. We are born as beings imbued with love, capable of forming deep and meaningful bonds. Yet as we journey through life, we encounter a subtle and insidious force that begins to shape our experiences, the ego. This aspect of our psyche, while essential to our individuality and survival, often oversteps its bounds, promoting the formation of attachments that, 
upon closer inspection, reveal themselves as mists clouding our perception, distorting judgment and distancing us from our primal essence of love. These attachments, born from the depths of the ego, serve as a mechanism for seeking external validation and security, an attempt to anchor our identity in things, people, or status that are, by nature, ephemeral and unstable. But why do we cling so tenaciously to these illusions? It's a question that invites reflection. As we peel back the layers of the ego, we realize that attachments are a strategy to compensate for deeply rooted insecurities and fear, a fragile barricade built to protect the vulnerable core of our being. Recognizing attachments as manifestations of the ego is the first step toward freeing ourselves from their unnecessary burden. This realization acts as a beacon, illuminating the path back to our true nature, a return to the love that is our foundation. But how do we make this transition from an egocentric perspective to one centered on love? The answer lies in consciously shifting our attitude towards personal value and identity. Instead of seeking approval and security from external sources, we begin to cultivate a self-esteem and self-love that are unshakable, regardless of external circumstances. This paradigm shift is profoundly liberating. It allows us to let go of fear-based attachments and embrace a life characterized by freedom, abundance, and above all, unconditional love. Imagine life as a journey across a vast ocean. Attachments are like anchors that tether us to ephemeral islands, while a love-centered perspective equips us with sails, enabling us to navigate freely, exploring the infinite possibilities that life has to offer. The freedom that comes with relinquishing fear-based attachments is akin to the sensation of flying, an elevation above the limitations imposed by the ego towards a horizon of unlimited opportunities. The illusion of the ego, the journey through the slippery terrain of the ego is marked by twisted mirrors and deceptive shadows. This aspect of our consciousness, so intricate in its composition, has the power to envelop us in a fog of illusions, whispering fallacies that make us feel inadequate, wanting or inflamed with the fire of envy. It's these illusions that lead us to unhealthy emotional attachments, a frenzied search for external validation that never quenches the spirit's thirst, but only intensifies the inner void. The real battle then is not against the ego itself, but against the illusions it weaves, a war of recognition and confrontation with the shadows that imprison us. The path to victory is not paved with denial or resistance, but with acceptance and the understanding that these internal voices of doubt and comparison are mere phantoms, without substance or power beyond what we grant them. Cultivating self-confidence and inner healing is not an act of isolation or self-aggrandizement, but a process of reconnecting with our essence, a reminder that at our core, we are complete whole. There is no higher path or more worthy destination. Each journey is unique, each step a reflection of our inner truth. Detaching, especially in the realm of relationships, is an acknowledgement of this completeness. It's not a renunciation of love or connection, but an embrace of the fullness that exists within us, regardless of the presence or approval of others. This detachment opens us to the abundance of the universe, a recognition that emotional strength is not derived from possession or dominion over others, but from balance, equality, and a shared understanding that every human being, every soul we cross paths with, plays an essential role in our journey. True emotional strength flourishes at the intersection of self-knowledge and empathy. A deep understanding that as we navigate the waters of life, we are at once solitary navigators, 
and part of a vast and intricate network of relations. In light of this, how can we free ourselves from the ego's shackles and embrace true freedom? The challenge is twofold. It requires the courage to dive deep into ourselves, confronting and healing the wounds that lead us to seek validation from without, and simultaneously, the compassion to recognize the shared humanity in all of us, seeing each person as a mirror of our own journey. Detachment. In practice, implementing detachment in our daily lives is an odyssey that challenges the tides of our being, an invitation to set sail from the comfortable shores of the known towards the vast sea of growth and authenticity. In this journey, true detachment serves as a beacon, guiding us through the mists of past experiences and relationships that, though they have shaped the landscape of our souls, need not determine the contours of our future. Overcoming the fear of missing out, known in our times as FOMO, is a battle against the currents of a culture that glorifies omnipresence and the saturation of experiences. This fear, fueled by illusory representations of happiness on social media and in the media, binds us to an incessant cycle of seeking something always out of reach an image of contentment perpetually beyond the horizon. Breaking free from this cycle means rejecting the notion that happiness is a destination shaped by the hands and eyes of others, and embracing the idea that it is found in the journey, in the waters under our own boat. Stoicism, with its ancient wisdom, offers us the key to this liberation an invitation to focus on what is within our influence, our thoughts, actions, and personal growth. This philosophy doesn't teach us to renounce the world or its pleasures, but to resize our perception of value, to find contentment and richness in what we truly possess, our being, our capacity to grow, to love, to overcome. Redefining happiness in our own terms is a revolutionary act, a gesture of courage that allows us to see beyond the smoky curtains of illusion. By valuing our worth, independent of external validation, we open the doors to experience the full spectrum of life, from its brightest joys to its deepest sorrows, all essential parts of the fabric of existence. Thus, detachment is not an end, but a means, not a renunciation, but a deeper and truer embrace of life in its entirety. It allows us to form more authentic connections, not just with others, but with ourselves, uncovering the hidden beauty and imperfections, vulnerability and impermanence. Each moment becomes an opportunity for self-discovery, each experience a step on the ladder of our personal development the path to happiness. In our relentless pursuit of happiness, we often encounter the mistaken notion that it resides in distant lands, perhaps in the arms of others, in the vaults of material treasures, or on the summits of social recognition. However, the true essence of happiness, the kind that withstands life storms and blooms in the fields of the soul, emerges from a much more intimate and profound place, our inner self. Self-confidence and the personal journey towards self-improvement are the foundations upon which the dwelling of genuine happiness is built. It's not a rigid structure imposed from the outside in, but a constantly progressing work of art shaped by introspection, the desire to grow, and the ability to marvel at one's own transformations. Detachment in this context does not mean severing ties or isolating oneself, but rather cultivating a deeper and more sincere connection with oneself. Recognizing that our intrinsic value is not tied to the approval or presence of others is liberating. This doesn't imply indifference, but a self-love that allows us to be complete by ourselves regardless of external circumstances. By embracing the stoic principles of focusing on what is under our control and serenely accepting what is not, 
we cultivate an unshakable source of happiness. This happiness is not fragile or conditional. It is resilient, sustained not by external validation, but by the continuous growth and deepening of our being. This path, although challenging, leads to a life full of richness and meaning. By nurturing our personal growth, our life becomes a complete masterpiece, not because it is perfect or immune to adversities, but because it is authentic. We are open to the beauty of the world and the contributions of others, but we are not dependent on these elements for our sense of worth or contentment. Acceptance of impermanence, the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, one of the most lucid minds humanity has ever known, resonates through the centuries with a powerful message about the acceptance of impermanence. At its heart, Stoicism reveals a fundamental truth about existence. Everything in life, from the most fleeting moments to the deepest connections, is subject to the universal law of change. Nothing is static. Nothing is permanent. Understanding and internalizing this truth is to open our eyes to the dance of life, a constant choreography of birth, growth, decline, and renewal. In relationships, this understanding invites us to look beyond the illusion of permanence, to see the beauty in the transience of our connections with others. By accepting that each person who crosses our path is here for a time, not forever, we are encouraged to live each moment with more presence, appreciation, and depth. The stoic rule of impermanence does not teach us to distance ourselves emotionally from others, but rather to embrace the natural flow of coming in and out of each other's lives without fear or resistance. This acceptance frees us from the shackles of anguish that often accompany loss or change. It endows us with a serene readiness to let go, not with resignation, but with a heart full of gratitude for the shared experiences. This perspective transforms the way we experience relationships. Instead of clinging to them out of fear of losing them, we learn to value them for their essence, for what they bring to us here and now. Impermanence, far from being a source of suffering, becomes a motivation to dive deeper into the waters of life, to love more freely with a heightened awareness of the preciousness of each shared moment. True freedom in relationships, therefore, does not lie in the quest for an illusory security of permanence, but in the ability to fully experience them, to surrender to the flow of life with confidence and love. It teaches us that in every goodbye, there is the seed of a new beginning, in every end, the promise of a new horizon. Control and influence, in our journey through existence, we often confront the storm of emotions and situations that seem beyond our control. Yet, as we delve into the depths of stoic wisdom, a beacon of clarity emerges in the distance, guiding us through the turbulent waters of life. Marcus Aurelius, an emperor not just of lands, but of boundless intellectual wealth, bequeathed us a golden key to emotional freedom. The discernment between what is within our power to shape and what must be accepted as it is. Have you ever paused to reflect on the power that lies in distinguishing between our own actions, thoughts and emotions and the feelings and behaviors of others? Imagine the freedom of recognizing that while we are the masters of our inner universe, the external world operates under laws that do not belong to us. This distinction is not merely a philosophy of detachment, but a vibrant invitation to self-improvement. Instead of dissipating our energy in territories beyond our control, why not channel it into cultivating an internal fortress? A fortress that remains unshakable in the face of the emotional storms that human relationships, in their unpredictable essence, inevitably bring. Stoic wisdom teaches us to invest in the fertile ground of our being, promoting the growth of an emotional stability that does not waver, 
does not unravel in the face of life's vicissitudes. In other words, by taking ownership of our ability to navigate our thoughts and emotions, we open doors to a more serene and balanced existence, freeing ourselves from the chains of what is beyond our reach. And here, dear listener, lies a provocation to self-examination. Where have we been placing our energies? Are we perhaps trying to hold the reins of the uncontrollable? Or are we building a sanctuary of peace and resilience within ourselves? I invite you to reflect on how this stoic perception can be a beacon in your own life, guiding you to a safe harbor of self-knowledge and tranquility. If you're enjoying this, don't miss out on the opportunity. Purchase the ebook now, Stoicism in the 21st Century, Ancient Strategies for Modern Challenges, and unlock your prosperity, abundance, and improve your relationships with this ebook. Link in the pinned comment, The Virtue of Self-Sufficiency. In a world where relationships and material possessions often define the contours of our happiness, the voice of Marcus Aurelius echoes as a call to awaken to a deeper and more authentic reality. He presents self-sufficiency not as an ideal of isolation, but as an invitation to discover a contentment that springs from inexhaustible sources within ourselves. This stoic perspective, far from being a mere exercise in introspection, is a compass for navigating the complexities of human relationships with grace and serenity. Consider for a moment the revolutionary proposition that true peace and happiness are fruits cultivated in the fertile soil of our being. In this land, we sow the seeds of wisdom, water them with resilience, and harvest emotional autonomy. Self-sufficiency then emerges not as a barrier that separates us from the world, but as a garden where our truest needs are met by ourselves. This reorientation of our quest for contentment inward rather than outward challenges the paradigm that we depend on external factors, people, positions, possessions for our fulfillment. Stoic wisdom teaches us that by strengthening our internal resources, we become less vulnerable to the storms that rage in the outside world. In other words, when our well-being is anchored in our own essence, the fluctuations of relationships and the vicissitudes of material life lose their power to destabilize our inner peace. This principle not only strengthens us individually, but also transforms the nature of our interactions. Approaching others from a state of completeness rather than neediness, we contribute to the creation of healthier and more enriching relational dynamics. Imagine for a moment relationships founded not on dependence, but on the sharing of two wholes that meet, respect and grow together. So dear listener, I leave you with a query. Are we building our happiness on solid internal pillars? Or are we adrift on the sea of external circumstances? I invite you to contemplate how the virtue of self-sufficiency can manifest in your life, not just as an abstract concept, but as a living practice that blossoms at the heart of your relationships and aspirations. The Path to Understanding on the winding path we tread in search of understanding and emotional balance, Stoic wisdom, with Marcus Aurelius at the helm, offers us a celestial map to navigate the often tumultuous waters of our own attachments. This philosophy, rooted in reflection and self-awareness, does not merely incite us to observe our emotions and thoughts from a distance, but to dive deep into their essence recognizing the ephemerality that characterizes them and, more crucially, the control we have over them. Consider for a moment the practice of introspection as a journey to the center of a labyrinth. Each step, each turn brings us closer to understanding the intricate attachments we weave around ourselves and others. By illuminating the hidden pathways of our feelings, we are able to discern the true nature of our attachments. Is the love we feel truly a reflection of mutual admiration and respect? Or is it a rope that ties us to the need for approval and fear of loneliness? 
Deep reflection allows us to see clearly the difference between genuine affection, which enriches our existence, and a dependency that traps us in cycles of dissatisfaction and desire. This distinction is the first step towards emotional emancipation, an awakening to the independence that enables us to face relationships and life with maturity and wisdom. By adopting the stoic practice of regularly examining our feelings and thoughts, we not only learn about the transient nature of our emotions, but also about the power that resides in our ability to choose how to react to them. This exercise of self-awareness is a powerful tool in the liberation from our attachments, guiding us on a path of growth and self-discovery. And so, dear listener, I invite you to reflect. How often do we pause to truly examine the threads that weave the tapestries of our relationships? By cultivating a practice of introspection, we can not only unravel the mysteries of our own hearts, but also learn to navigate our relationships with greater authenticity and freedom. Embracing our social instincts, Amidst the quest for balance and wisdom in the complex tapestry of our existence, Stoic philosophy, especially under the reflective guidance of Marcus Aurelius, presents us with a seemingly delicate paradox. How can we simultaneously embrace emotional detachment and yet honor our essence as intrinsically social beings? This inquiry leads us to explore not the denial, but the celebration of our communal nature in a way that enriches both the individual and the collective. Marcus Aurelius, with his profound introspection, navigates us through this maze, demonstrating that living in accordance with our nature does not mean forsaking the bonds we form, but rather engaging with them in a more conscious and balanced manner. Imagine for a moment that each interaction with another being is an act of balancing, where on one side there is genuine love and appreciation, and on the other, emotional detachment. This balance is not a tightrope stretched over an abyss of indifference, but rather a bridge connecting two hearts with the firmness of autonomy and the gentleness of empathy. This stoic principle of balance teaches us to love without possessiveness, to value others not as extensions of our desires or fears, but as sovereign individuals, each navigating their own journey. It's an invitation to cultivate healthy relationships that not only resonate with our innate need for connection, but also respect the sacred territory of individual autonomy. From this perspective, emotional detachment is not a cold withdrawal, but a warm opening to more authentic and meaningful relations. It's the acknowledgement that although we cannot control others or the outcomes of our interactions, we can choose to approach them with an open heart, free from the shackles of fear and expectation. Thank you for following this video to the end, and we hope the stoic lessons on emotional detachment have been enlightening. Subscribe to the channel and activate notifications for more content that will illuminate your personal growth journey. Leave a like and share this video with those who might benefit from these strategies of emotional freedom. Your comments are valuable to us. So share your experiences and how you plan to apply these teachings in your life. Continue with us in the pursuit of more wisdom and transformation. Until next time.